Kitco News special coverage of the Future Blockchain Summit is brought to you by Cook Finance, a revolution in DeFi asset management. We're back in the Future Blockchain Summit in Dubai now with Florian Grumis, Managing Director of Midas Touch Consulting. Florian, welcome David. to the show. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Again, for I've, me. I've worked with you for a long time. First time in person, very awesome. exciting, and uh, thank you for the introduction. We're here because you've made the uh, introduction to the organizers, so I appreciate your uh, oh, contribution welcome, to our show. Florian, you seem happier this time than two weeks ago. <laughs> and it's not because we're just talking in person, it's not just because of that, it's because you are more bullish in the crypto markets today than I spoke with you a few weeks ago and you told me offline, it's because you've got to listen to the markets. The markets tell you which direction to take, and you're following the wind, so to speak. Why has the wind changed direction in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, uh, yeah, you have to listen to the market. It's not about being right. We all want to make money at the end of the day. And the market is doing what it does. And uh, three weeks ago, I think that was the last time I was on the show, I thought the, the whole stress in China and the Chinese real estate market would create more problems in all markets. It, it did, especially in the stock market, but uh, Bitcoin suddenly, quickly, to the surprise of many, recovered rather strongly and obviously it was the, the Bitcoin ETF uh, which uh, which got basically approved a few days ago. Yeah. Um, then also the debt ceiling situation in, in, in the US rather quickly disappeared and it seems the market don't really care at the moment about the stress in the Chinese real estate market. Yeah. Obviously there has been much more money created over the last few weeks to, right. to attack that problem. And yeah, listening to the market, it looks like Bitcoin went so much higher. Whatever I personally th thought, it's going to move higher. Yeah, we're going to get and to that's your... why you're going to be a hodler, you know? We're, we're, so... Yeah, we're going to get to your forecast in just a minute. But before we talk about the future, let's talk about the past. Yeah. This year has been a very volatile year for... Well, <laughs> this year. Every single year has been a volatile year for Bitcoin. But let's talk about this year in particular. It's reached right. new all-time highs earlier in the year. Right. Then it basically saw a summer lull, yeah. summer doldrums in July. What happened between April and July? Between April and July, I mean, you had the, the big China FUD banning the mining uh, operations in China. I think that was uh, the main reason back then. Um, and then in July, the market was so oversold. Uh, there was real panic in the market. And then we got this short squeeze, I believe, in, in August uh, and early September. Bitcoin went up to exactly to the 61.8 uh, 61 uh, yeah. retracement level at 52.500, something like this. And that was a perfect short squeeze. And, and then I think we got this, this pullback, 39,000 was the low. Yeah. And since then, Bitcoin is off the races and it's running back to nearly the all-time high from April. It looks like uh, it's, it wants to march higher. So you're right, the China FUD story early in the year was a problem. But let me just talk about that for a minute because from July to now is not really a long period of time. It seems to me the markets have just forgotten about what China did. Would you say fundamentally banning Bitcoin mining and now, of course, Bitcoin trading? Do you think banning that in China is not that big of a problem for Bitcoin? No, I mean, that was, I think we talked about this one in one of the last interviews already. I think uh, the markets realized that the network continued to work flawlessly, even though a large portion of it used to be mined in China and it, it was not a problem. Instead, the network just continued and that actually showed how strong and resilient the Bitcoin network already is and how decentralized it is already. And then the fact that most, many of those miners are now moving or have moved already to, to America, Texas especially, uh, I think it's it's great news and I think in the long term we will see and remember that, that this was a catastrophic decision by China in terms of geopolitical movements. Um, they basically banned Bitcoin mining and now Bitcoin miners moved to another place. And as it looks now, we will need a better money than, than the fiat money that we have right now. And the only thing I see is Bitcoin. This is my so. theory. This is my theory. I think the Chinese government is too smart to simply think that, well, just because we're banning Bitcoin, we're going to stop the network from mining. That's not really how Bitcoin works in the first place. They realize this. And so I think they're just limiting capital controls. Right? They're preparing for the CBDC to launch in China. They don't want people to move a lot of money out of the country exactly. using cryptocurrencies. Yeah. yeah, that's also a reason, of course. Yeah, of course. But I think you also have to always remember these are socialists. Uh, so they, they don't really understand the economy. They are in for the suppression and power, power game. Yeah, let's talk about the future then. So what's your forecast now for Bitcoin by the end of the year? 
Actually, by the end of the year is not that. It's we're six weeks away from the end of the year. Kind of, yeah. yeah I mean, we're, it's, we're, we're, uh, no, no, we're 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 sorry, two, we're eight weeks. We're eight weeks plus two and a half weeks. months. Yeah, more exactly. Two, two and a half months. That's yeah. not too far away. Right, um, but lots of things can happen in crypto because it's so fast. Right. Um, if Bitcoin wants to break out and march higher, I think we we have a good chance to see 100k towards the end of the year, maybe even higher. And um, of course, that would spark an altcoin season uh, again. And um, I think we are in, if Bitcoin really continues, and I would say this 60 to 63,000 level is maybe the last resistance of the bears. Um, so if there's nothing coming from them, yeah, Bitcoin is off the races and it's going to be 100K and even higher, even 150K is possible towards January. Maybe. It, yeah, Bitcoin seems to be hitting resistance right now at 60 to 63. Why is this an important level? Is it simply because that was the previous all time high? Yeah, it's a psychological number, uh, it's a round number, it's the all time high at 65,000. And the market is very overbought in the short term. Huh? We yeah. had a big run. I mean, Bitcoin went higher, how much? $20,000 within That's three right. weeks. That's right. So, um, it's it's basically should have a little breather here, but um, if it's not uh, put, we're pulling back a lot, yeah, we I think it's clear market wants to move higher. Would you not? Would you not just to, to play the contrarian's uh, viewpoint here? Would you not see the run from July up to now? You know, it's nearly fifty percent move up from Bitcoin for Bitcoin, and say, well, look, given the short term cycles, it's time for a pullback. Maybe it's hit its previous all time high. We're near its previous all time high. It's time for a little pullback right now. Yeah, you can of course uh, look at it like this, but um, for a typical, it would be something like a B wave bounce after initial hardcore sell-off. But the sentiment doesn't really fit to it now. It's too much skepticism. I don't see like this crazy greed around me, um, and I, I don't think that most of the altcoins have moved either over the last few weeks. So it seems that Bitcoin is marching ahead, and then the altcoins will follow at some point. Um, so, uh, and also the, 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 the way it happened so fast, it seems a lot of people were on the wrong side of the market or at least were surprised by the move. I mean, I, I never short Bitcoin. I never give the recommendation to short Bitcoin. The only thing that I do is uh, divide basically my investments into a hodl position that you always keep no matter what. And you have a trading position that you can basically trade around. But um, I'm probably a lot of people again went short uh, Bitcoin. So, uh, but uh, if Bitcoin goes to 100k, what's going to happen to the altcoin market? Let's talk about the second largest coin. First Ethereum. of all, Ethereum. Yeah. I've noticed in the past six weeks, about a month and a half or so, it hasn't really been tracking Bitcoin as well as it did in the past. In the sense that Bitcoin has been rising in the past month, Ethereum has not yet outperformed Bitcoin in just the past month. That's weird. Yeah. Well, I mean, they never work together exactly all the time. Sure. So um, if you compare it to four years ago, the last real bull run in 2017, um, Bitcoin also moved ahead. And then at some point, suddenly Ethereum started to, to play catch up. So and, you're and saying really, Ethereum typically lags and exactly. then catches up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've seen this also in, in, in spring and early summer. Bitcoin topped in April, Ethereum topped in May, nearly a month later. So that was also a signal, this divergence, that we're coming to an end in that bull run. Yeah. So right now, Bitcoin signals, I'm marching ahead. I'm providing the confidence into the sector, and then the altcoins will follow. And if this happens, I think Ethereum has a good chance to move to 20K. I mean, it's 20K. That's it, it's crazy, but, but it is possible. It's probably four or five times from where we are right now. Over the next few months, it's possible. And if you compare... Uh, I just mentioned the bull run four years ago. If you compare that, the Ethereum from 2017 today is probably Solana. Yes. One of the, the most spectacular coins this year. Already amazing performance, but I could imagine this thing goes another five to ten times higher. So back then in 2017, Ethereum went from 130 to $1,300 within a few weeks at the end of that bull run. Uh, and that's usually the most spectacular gains. Right. Um, it's always in the last few weeks or the last two months of a bull run, uh, you're going to see this extremely spectacular gains. Important to consider also today, we have more DeFi platforms being built right now on Ethereum than back in 2017 or before. Right. So potentially now the DeFi space has provided a secondary impetus or driver for the Ethereum price. Before maybe you could say, Ethereum was a leverage play on Bitcoin, but now there are maybe other drivers as well, correct? I mean, four years ago, it was all this ICO hype and many yeah. of them planned to build on the Ethereum 
a blockchain, but there was no real programs operating already. Yes. Um, that has changed dramatically nowadays, of course. Um, I, I, I'm very excited, looking forward for the next few months. I think you see lots of chances in, in many points, but you also have to be aware that this party at some point will end. And then any investment that you do today, you probably should only have a time horizon of a few months. Sure. So it's not something, if you buy today, maybe Bitcoin you can hold it through, but everything else you will see crazy pullbacks at some point. And so I, I think the time frame of a few months, yes. After that, let's see how, how the situation is in January, February, because usually those altcoins get this, uh, get, they, they, they retrace 80, 90%. Of course, many people might have chased the FOMO run over the last two months, either Bitcoin or Ethereum, and maybe bought near its all time highs. But you're saying there's more room to climb. Should they be selling now? No, no, I wouldn't sell anything right. at the moment. I would make sure to have full exposure, but um, uh, always keep in mind that it's not a long-term position anymore. Yes. So uh, I, I'm willing to hold my Bitcoin to any ups and downs. Maybe Ethereum as well, but most of the other altcoins, no. It's too so crazy. 100K Bitcoin, 20K Ethereum, those are your medium-term targets. Yeah, I think Bitcoin can even go to 150K or even 200K. Wow, okay. um, uh, this is like this final parabola. It looks uh, like it's, it's cooking up now. All so. right. Okay, so all right, so you've explained your technicals uh, already. Let's talk about Solana. You mentioned Solana is what Ethereum used to be today. Why is that? So what's what's going to happen now to the Ethereum ecosystem now that you've got competitors to Ethereum? People call it competitors. Some people call it complements. People view it different ways. No, I mean I I, I was of the opinion that competition is a good thing. It, it will make the ecosystem overall more resilient and stronger. And it will improve each of the each of the the projects and, and and the teams and everything because everybody has to work harder and those who don't hard, work hard enough they're going to be out. So I think it's good. What does Solana have that Ethereum doesn't? It's faster and it's more scalable and it's especially for this booming hype NFT kind of story. Uh, yeah. It's the thing. So um, I I don't need to know everything. I just need to listen to the market and that's where we started in the beginning today. If you listen to the market, Solana has been the best performing coin. Maybe you can mention uh, Polkadot as well. Yeah. But, and and I, I, it's very likely to assume that if we get this run in Bitcoin, then at some point uh, Solana will be the best performer. Well, can you just from a chartist perspective, if you look at the chart of Solana, right? You've got a massive run up. Actually, later, it, it, it bloomed very late compared yeah. to other coins. Yeah. And then it kind of just stayed flat right. over the last few months. So. It, it seems to me that it's not really following Bitcoin. It's not really following Ethereum. It's kind of just moving on its own. What's it's going lagging. on there? No, it's lagging. It's it's clearly lagging, but but I don't mind the points that are lagging. It's a similar thing that you see in gold and silver. Often gold makes the move, and then a few days later, silver starts to catch up. Yeah. That's great. That's that's actually confirming signals. You didn't yeah. miss, miss the move in those smaller coins, or in my example, in silver. So um, I don't mind that. I think Solana had a nice consolidation. Yes. Compared to a year ago, it's crazy where it's trading now. Right. And that's often the problem that people look at crypto and they're like, dude, if I have would have bought a year ago, I could have bought Bitcoin at 10, 20,000. Now it's trading at 60,000. No, I'm not going in anymore. But what it really means is you're missing out on another 100%, 200%. Because it's crypto and the, the, the moves are just much bigger and more insane than in any other market. You told me offline trading cryptocurrencies is not like life. You've got to be an opportunist in the market. I like that. I like that analogy. So let me just ask you simply, what are the biggest opportunities right now in the crypto space? What are the biggest potentials in the protocols you're viewing? Yeah, I really like Star Atlas. It's a very small coin, but um, I, it's a great uh, gaming NFT um, upcoming uh, 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 ecosystem. And uh, I think it's super exciting. And I see lots of kids going crazy about this already. So that's I think one of the most exciting stories. How do you feel about the gamify space? They're uh, putting kind of a mix between DeFi and NFTs. Yeah, exactly. With, that's in it. the that's video gaming. Yeah. In the video yeah. gaming. Uh, yeah. No, it's great. Uh, you can buy spaceships and then trade them, yeah. improve them, and then suddenly you sell your spaceship for a million dollars. <laughs> so it's uh, it, it's crazy. But this is the the space is the new space. We have to accept it. Um, people still have problems to get their head around all these gaming and the metaverse 
but it's happening and all the kids were growing up with this it's totally normal even me back in the, in the 80s and 90s i played but it, back then you didn't have internet yeah. uh, you didn't have all these crazy games we used to play with an amiga sure. so uh, but but here we are and, and it's totally normal and it's gonna be part of it so that's one point where i believe is very interesting i mentioned already i think you will do well with bitcoin you will do very well with ethereum and solana a few others polka dot we mentioned already i think even cardano uh, has been nicely correcting if bitcoin continues to march higher yeah. Dano could also have a five times from here, no problem. And um, maybe just to, to recap, because we said opportunistic. So that's, that's the most challenging thing. You have to understand that trading and investing is counterintuitive. Because in real life, you don't really want to hang out with opt opportunistic people, right? This would be the guys who want to meet with you tomorrow, but today, uh, but no, they want to meet you today. But tomorrow they want, don't want to hang out with you because there's another friend who's more interesting, has more connections. Yeah, the other friend has more Bitcoin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah for example. Yeah. So, so you, you don't want this, right? Um, but in trading and investing, you have to be opportunistic. You have to accept that it's not about being right. It's about making money, right. listening to the market, and things are changing right. all the time, right? So um, and that's, I think, a very important thing you to un uh, understand and accept. Okay, all right. So you're long-term bullish and gamified. I hope that... Uh, the government doesn't ban this. They're going to say this is child labor. You know, you're making money off children playing video games. I mean, but I mean, that's a stretch, but I do see the potential long term. A lot of companies are develop developing this. So finally, let's talk about you've made your bullish case. Finally, let's talk about the headwinds, potential risks to the crypto space right now. What would you see that could possibly challenge your bull case? I mean, one thing that is always there is simply a technical glitch. We had that already uh, eight, nine years ago, I think was the last serious one. You can make the argument that the network now is so decentralized in Bitcoin that it won't happen anymore. But then again, it can happen, I believe. It's technology, it's math at the end of the day. But um, So that is one thing that is always there. Yeah. Uh, the, um, they're not going to ban Bitcoin, but they probably start taxing it. They're going to regulate it. And, and that might have some serious consequences right. until either people will realize that Bitcoin is unstoppable yeah. and they, they need to have it anyway because of the heavy, crazy money printing. Everything has become so expensive that Bitcoin is one of the only places where you can actually hedge yourself against that. Yes. That would be one thing. Or maybe, which I doubt, but maybe the politicians in America are smart enough to understand that that actually is a huge chance for America to come back and, and have basically a, a future technology and being the leader in that technology, right? Because we mentioned China and I think it's a big mistake that they did in the long run. Yeah. And, and that's a chance for America, but they need to have good regulation. And, yeah. and right now, I doubt that this will come. So that can be a change. That could be a trigger for a crypto winter that might be a, uh, coming next year. Excellent. All right. So we'll watch out for those risks as well. Thank you so much, Florian. You're excellent welcome. Excellent thoughts, excellent analysis. Thank you, David. And so glad to see you in person. Yeah, finally. me too. So we'll do Pleasure. More of this. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll have more for you from the conference. Stay tuned. Kitco News. Special coverage of the Future Blockchain Summit is brought to you by Cook Finance, a revolution in DeFi asset management.